What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. Now behind me, we got the third gen Toyota Tacoma. And on the last episode, we're in the process of installing the amplifier, sound processor, and subwoofer. We ran out of time, so without further ado, let's go ahead and finish up this install. Okay, so for wire connections on the amplifier, let me go ahead and show you guys what's going on. So we got the ground wire, ground wire goes on the carpet, and it actually hooks up underneath the parking brake bracket right there. Some nice exposed metal. And then I've got this remote wire right here, which is actually branched across the center console area, and it goes to the passenger side, and this will connect to the LCI. Then we've got the RCA cables, three sets, front, rear, and subwoofer channel, and I've labeled them one, two, and three, makes things easier. And I've got a speaker wire right here, which actually runs underneath the carpet, and that'll hook up to the rear subwoofer. And then within this wire loom, there's actually eight different wires. So putting this wire loom right here was a good idea, kept things clean. And then this actually routes up into the dashboard. So here's the wire right here, and this actually plugs into all the speaker harness connections right here on the back of the dashboard. So it basically feeds all the speakers with the amplifier signal right there. So it's essentially all the connections we'll have for the amplifier. Let me go on the other side and show you what the LCI is gonna require. Okay, the audio control LC7i is much smaller than the amplifier. So let me show you the connections here. So this telephone looking wire, this is for the remote gain control. It basically, it's a rotary knob and it tells you how much bass to feed the subwoofer and whatnot. I'm not sure where I'm gonna mount this thing, but I ran the wire anyways, just in case I hooked this thing up. And the excess wires are underneath the dashboard right there in a zip tie. And then I got a ground wire right here, which actually attaches to a 10 millimeter bolt underneath the carpet. And then obviously the RCA cables, one, two, and three will hook up to this. And then we got the remote out wire right here because the main remote wire is gonna go into the LCI right here. So you got a remote in and you got a remote out. And then we've got the speaker wires right here, which is actually sourced from the radio itself. So essentially the radio is gonna feed the signal into this LC7i and then the LC7i feeds the amplifier and then the amplifier feeds the speakers on the truck. So that's basically how the system is wired up. So it's basically the cliff notes of how the system's gonna be wired up. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my vacuum, vacuum the carpet up, both sides, and then we'll go ahead and clean up those plastic boards, mount the boards in position, mount the amplifier, start making the wire connections. We're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, now before I go ahead and mount the amplifier onto the mounting plate, I'm doing a test fitment of the seat. So basically I got the amplifier almost centered underneath the seat. I wanna make sure I got the proper clearance. I don't know if you can see it down there, but amp fire is sitting on that plate. It is not secured just yet. And then right here, you can see the backside of the amp fire, because essentially this front seat is rolled up a little bit more forward so I can get access to those mounting bolts. So it looks like I got the right amount of clearance for the amp fire. It's not too far left, not too far right. Right in the center works out pretty good. And I believe I've got the perfect access for all these wires that need to plug in the amp fire which is basically facing these controls right here. Now I've had to move operations back inside the garage because it's rain outside. But anyhow, one disappointment I had is on this mounting plate, I actually put an additional work of having these ears going right over the front mounting bolts for the seat. However, I could not make the seat fit just right because basically there's alignment pins with the seat and then these seats have an angled mounting hole right there with the threads. So no matter how much I bored out those plastic holes on this mounting plate, I just could not get those bolts to align perfectly. So I basically had to cut off those ears right there. And same thing over here on the right hand side. Just made a clean cut and took a metal file, running off these edges, make it nice and clean. So essentially this mounting plate is gonna be held in place with the rear seat bolts. As you can see, got the hole right there, got the hole right there. And the seat mount will actually push down on this lip right here. So this thing will still be secure no matter what. I just can't use the front seat mount bolts in order to secure this plate. No harm, no foul, trial and error. This is what it's all about. So I hope this helps you out guys. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and center the amplifier as best I can. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark the holes, either scar it with a drill bit or take up Sharpie or whatever it is. And then I'll go ahead and take this plate up, pre-drill those holes, and then I've got mounted holes in order to secure this amplifier. So, so after the holes are drilled out, we'll go ahead, secure the amplifier with the screws, and I'll take all these wires and make all the connections. So let's go ahead and take care of this.
Okay, before we go ahead and install the GL Audio Stealth Box in the back of the access cab, you need to go ahead and remove the plastic center console that comes with the truck, and also this mounting bracket on the floor, and then the two rubber covers on the seat belts, and these four bolts. Let me show you what's going on inside the truck. And this right here is the rear mounting bracket that came with the GL Audio subwoofer. Basically, you'll take the seat belts, take these metal spacers, make sure the metal spacer is on the bottom, and make sure to elevate this rear bracket. So now the rear bracket's ready to go. Now moving on to the front floor bracket, there were some complications with this. This metal bracket is supplied by GL Audio, however it was half inch too short. So I couldn't get this lip right in front of the subwoofer. So I had to go to my local hardware store, get some half inch metal shims right there, along with some washers and some longer bolts. These are M8 by 1.25 by the way. So after doing some test fitment, this thing now fits like a glove. So. So I'm not quite sure if there's engineering mishaps on the brackets themselves, or maybe the holes were drilled incorrectly on the stealth box itself, but the problem has been resolved. So if you have this issue, half inch metal shims, a washer, and longer M8 by 1.25 bolts is gonna be the solution. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the GL Audio Stealth Box. Okay, here it is. GL Audio Stealth Box with a down firing 10 inch shallow subwoofer. This is designed to replace the center console in the back of an access cab. Now you've got built-in cubbies on the top area right here, and you've got nice carpeted texture all on the outside of this box. All right, let me show you what's going on down below. That's where the action's at. Okay, closer look at the underside of the GL Audio Stealth box. Obviously, we've got a 10 inch shallow subwoofer, and there's where you make the connections from your amplifier. And right here on these recessed cubbies is an area to store your seatbelts, which is a nice feature. And then right here is one hole for the mounting bracket. And on the other side, there's the hole for the mounting bracket in the bottom front mounting hole right there, which is the one we had to modify. I'm excited to hear this 10 inch subwoofer in the back of the truck. Now I did test out the subwoofer in the Acura just to make sure everything worked. And this thing sounded awesome. And this is a much bigger interior volume space. While the access cab, the speaker is gonna be literally right behind you. So this thing's gonna be really loud. And without further ado, let's go ahead, and install the GL Audio Stealth Box in the back of the access cab. And the GL Audio Stealth Box is officially mounted and installed. You got a mounting bolt right there. Now you can go ahead and put your seatbelt buckle back in position. Mounting bolt right there on the lower front. And a mounting bolt right there on the driver's side. Go ahead and put that seatbelt buckle back there. I love those recessed seatbelt buckles. That's a very cool feature right there. Things are looking pretty good. So let's continue on the next step. Okay, next step of the process is to go ahead and get this audio control LC7i mounted onto the mounting plate and also get the wiring taken care of. So let me go ahead and take care of the wiring and mounting on this and I'll walk you through how this thing's wired up. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Alrighty guys, the audio control LC7i is officially wired up. Now there is a lot of wires to keep in mind. This is a five channel system, front and rear plus subwoofer. So let me go and show you guys how I wired up this audio control LC7i. So in this wire loom right here, we've got eight wires for all the four speakers. So front left is white, front right is gray, rear left is purple, and rear right is green. Now one thing to note on this LC7i, they put the negative on the left hand side. 
Usually I'm used to seeing the positive and then the negative, but just be cautious on that. So the black stripe wire, that's your negative and solid is actually positive. Same thing, gray stripe, solid gray, purple stripe, solid purple, green stripe, solid green. So that's basically how you wire up the speaker inputs into the LC7i. And on the bottom right here, we have the remote out, which is this white wire right here. And that actually goes to the amplifier itself. It tells the amplifier to turn on. And then you got this red wire and this yellow wire. Now this is a special harness I bought from Taco Tunes. This actually feeds up into the dashboard so I don't have to do any splicing. So basically this is the wiring harness right here. It's basically a T harness. And you can see the red and the yellow wires right there. And this right here is where it plugs into the back of the harness. And this part right here will plug into the back of the head unit. And with those two wires, you got the red one, which is a remote in, and the yellow one, which is your constant 12 volt. And last but not least, we got the ground, which is this red wire, and it actually goes under the carpet, and there's a factory ground point. So that's where this thing is grounded at. Okay, so moving up to the top left, you have your RCA cables, and the RCA cables are then fed to the amplifier itself. Now, the good thing about this LC7i is it's going to take this channel right here, and it's actually going to convert a signal for the subwoofer. Because obviously we have no connection for the subwoofer on the head unit itself. So that's the good thing about this LC7i. So now that I think about it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and swap the front channel to the back side right here. Because you have a stronger signal from the factory head unit than you do the rear signal right here. So I'm going to go ahead and flip flop those wires. So let me go ahead, flip flop those wires front to rear. And then we'll have an appropriate signal that we have for the subwoofer. And then we'll go ahead, plug in the head unit. And then we'll basically put it in position. We're not going to secure it. And then we'll go ahead, pop the hood, connect the battery, and turn the key to the on position. You don't want to fully turn the car on or the truck because you might throw an SRS light. And I don't want to deal with resetting that thing. All right, so let's go ahead and take care of those actions and see if this thing actually works. Okay, the audio control LC7i is officially wired up. Now I went ahead and put the rear channel on this one right here. And I put the front channel on this one right here. So what's going on is basically you're going to have the signal from one of these front or rear. And it's actually going to convert it to the subwoofer. And this Toyota Tacoma itself, the stronger signal is the front one. And I don't know what vehicle you're putting this in. But if your vehicle has the same thing that Toyota does. So I think the rear, they've only tuned it for like 20, 25% or whatever it is. So I went ahead and flipped that. And then make sure you go to the amplifier and you put the appropriate RCA cables on channels one and two and three and four. So anyways, bottom left, this is how I have it wired. Purple stripe, purple. Green stripe, green. White stripe, solid white. Gray stripe, solid gray. And then moving over here, we got the remote out. This white wire right here. And it actually reaches over to the amplifier itself. And it tells the amplifier to turn on. And then we got this red wire and this yellow wire. This is the special harness I bought from Taco Tunes. It actually goes into the dashboard itself. It's basically a T harness. So here's the harness right here. It plugs into the dashboard harness right there. And this will then plug into the back of the head unit. So there's no splicing involved whatsoever. So the red wire is a remote in. And that basically tells the system to turn on. And then you got a positive 12 volt right there for the yellow wire. And then the ground wire on the far right, that's my red wire. There's actually a grounding point underneath this carpet. So there's a 10 miller bolt and I went in and attached it with that 10 miller bolt. Now, as I mentioned before, here's the RCA cables up here at the top. You got the left and right for the main outputs, channel two, and then the channel three, which is subwoofer. And I've got this remote level control plugged in. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, but I actually ran it up under the dashboard right there. So basically it's a rotary knob and I'm just not sure where I'm gonna mount this thing. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna install it, but I ran the wire just in case. Okay, so before I go ahead and put the radio in and do some testing, let me show you the harnesses I bought. Okay, so this is harness number one. I went ahead and put that sheathing on just to clean the wires up. But basically, this is fed from the amplifier, and the amplifier is actually plugging into the back of the dashboard harness right there. These are your speaker wires. So basically, the amplifier is feeding all the signal to the dashboard, the door speakers, and whatnot. And then harness number two, obviously put that sheathing on as well. This plugs into the back of the radio itself. And what this will do is it routes down and it comes over to this audio control LCI. And that's how it receives the signal from those speakers. And as I just mentioned, this custom T harness right here, which alleviates any crimping or cutting of wires. So you can have a remote in and a constant 12 volt. 
and this plugs into the back radio itself. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, plug up the radio, and just put it in place. I'm not gonna bolt it in yet. And then I'm gonna go ahead, pop the hood, connect the battery, and cross my fingers and see if this thing actually works. Wish me luck. Okay, before I go ahead and put the head unit back in place, let me show you the wiring harness situation here. Now this black harness right there with the custom sleeving, that's actually feeding the audio control LC7i. And then right next to it with all those white wires and that red and yellow, that's basically a T harness that supplies the audio control LC7i as well. Right there inside the dashboard, that's the harness that goes for the amplifier and that feeds the front and rear speakers right there. So it is a lot of wires, but if you guys want to get some information right here for wiring, now here's a chance. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, bolt the dashboard back together and start putting the truck back together. All right, now it's time to mount the passenger seat, but before doing so, let me show you the settings on this LC7i. Now, this is the rear input right here, and just look at the level I had to crank it up to in order to match it up to the front. So that's the front channel, that's the subwoofer channel. You can see the dots are facing straight up, but that one's 75% right there. And that's because Toyota and probably some other manufacturers put emphasis on the front speakers and they really dial down the rear speakers. So now these speakers are well balanced on the front and rear, so you get a lot more sound using this LC7i. And let me show you guys why I mounted this thing as far forward as I could. Okay, so here's the passenger seat we're about to install. Let me show you what's underneath this passenger seat here. So here's the bottom of the seat. Obviously this is the front. Now I don't know if you guys can see this metal bar right here, but this thing hangs down really low. So that's the reason why I mounted that LC7i as far forward as I could. For whatever reason, the driver's side does not have this metal bar, which is why we put the amplifier underneath the driver's seat. So we're going to go ahead, bolt the seat in, and these seat bolts are four 14 millimeter bolts. But before we go ahead and fasten down those four 14 millimeter bolts, make sure to go ahead and plug these harnesses in to underside the seat. So let's go ahead and put the seat in. Okay, passenger side seat is all bolted in position with the four 14 millimeter bolts. Now we can go ahead and put the driver's seat in. Now if you guys want to get a JL Audio RD 900x5, I'll go ahead and show you my settings I'm using. Let me just do a brief scroll so you can see the settings. I'm not going to tell you every single thing. Okay, let's go ahead and bolt up that driver's side seat. All 
Alrighty, so now that everything's installed, how does it actually sound? Let me tell you guys, this thing sounds phenomenal. Now the number one thing I like about this is I got a balanced system. So the rear speaker volume matches the front door speaker volume, and that was very important to me. And on top of that, we added a subwoofer, which we actually feel and hear the sound of the bass drum, electronic music, whatever you're into. Now there's always gonna be room for upgrade, whether you're upgrading the door speakers or maybe putting some silk dome tweeters up on the dashboard for some higher clarity. But I'm really happy how it turned out. You know, the kicker speakers and the doors and the kicker tweeters up front, very happy with, along with the rear speakers as well. So I'm not gonna go ahead and mess with anything. We're gonna keep it as is. Like I said before, very happy how this thing turned out. We got some higher volumes they can achieve. Now, I don't usually listen to music too loud. I usually just listen to it like volume 15, maybe 17, for those of you familiar with Tacoma radios. But if a favorite song comes on, I'll turn it up to like 30, 35, and just enjoy it for maybe three minutes, and just turn it back down to normal volume. Guys, you don't wanna go deaf listening to loud music all the time, so you know, just be careful the hearing. And as I mentioned before, with the GL Audio Stealth Box, with that 10 TW3 shot amount subwoofer, sounds absolutely phenomenal. Now it doesn't have the depth like a 10W6 or a 10W3 just because it doesn't have the extension because it's a shallow mount sub, but it's very, very close. And I'm sure if you guys have a stealth box for your Tacoma, whether it's a double cab or access cab, you're not gonna be disappointed. So what I recommend putting a stereo system in your Tacoma, absolutely without a doubt. If you've got the funds and you're willing to put in the work, just go ahead and do it because you only live once. And I appreciate audio, whether it's a nice movie or a nice song that comes on the radio. And I just like to turn it up and just hear the clarity and actually feel the music as well, along with all the bass drums. All right, now guys, keep in mind that this is for non-JBL equipped Toyota Tacomas only. Now the JBL system has its own quirks. I believe it's got a separate amplifier and I think it runs on three ohms as well. It's a very complex system to upgrade, so I don't know much knowledge about those things, but if this is JBL equipped, you might want to consult on the forums or whatever, but this is for non-JBL equipped Tacomas. But doing these upgrades is for non-JBL equipped Toyota Tacomas. Just keep that in mind. Okay, now that everything's installed, the amplifier, sound processor, and subwoofer, how much does everything cost? So let's go over a cost breakdown. Okay, the audio control LC7i that mounts underneath the passenger seat, that retails for $215. I got on sale for $147. Okay, next up we have the JL Audio RD905 five channel amplifier that's mounted at the driver's seat. This retails for $700. I got this used for $360. Now there might be some objection to buying some used audio equipment, but audio equipment, especially car audio, depreciates very fast. But this JL Audio stuff is high quality, so I trust buying a used one Plus the user had high feedbacks, so I have no qualms upon used amplifier. Okay, so for the three custom wiring harnesses that plugs behind the radio and also on the dashboard wiring harness, that was from Taco Tunes, that was $105. Well worth the money, didn't have to cut or splice any wires, it was all plug and play and loved every single bit of that. In the ABS quarter inch plastic, which I used to mount the amplifier and sound processor on, I got two sheets for $43. And for the audio cables, we got three RCA cables, a four gauge power wire that hooks up to the car battery, an inline fuse holder, those were $95. And last but not least, we got the GL Audio Stealth Box, which was made specifically for the Tacoma Access Cab. Now this thing retails for $900. I got this on open box for $615. Substantial savings there. Now the only thing I saw at the open box, it's very hard to see, but there's like a quarter inch chip of carpet right here in front, very unnoticeable. I was able to pull it down and basically put some adhesive right there and you can't even tell nothing happened. So substantial savings right there. $900 is crazy, but 615, that's very doable right there. Okay, so according to all my calculations, the MSRP regular price for all this audio equipment comes to $2,058. I paid actually $1,362 buying a used amplifier and an open box subwoofer, and I saved $696. Not bad at all. 
We're very happy with the savings and you guys can do the same too. You just gotta shop around, look for some open box buys, maybe buy some used equipment if you want. It just depends on your comfort level, but I have no qualms buying some used equipment or open box. So $696 saved goes a long way these days. Well, alrighty guys, that wraps up the installation of an external amplifier, audio processor, and rear subwoofer for a third gen Tacoma. Now, if you guys are on the fence about upgrading the audio on your non-JBL equipped Toyota Tacoma, just go ahead and do it because it turned out absolutely phenomenal. And I'm sure you'll like the end result as well. And if you guys got any questions about any installation processes, please feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to answer all questions. And if you found this video helpful or entertaining, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.